You might have come across my divide protect macro in some of my videos or in my gun road. And what it does is that it divides a model proportionally. So if, for example, I have, I use divide straight up from the geometry tab. And if you look at my model, when I press divide, you see that it lose, it lost some volume there. As I, as I divide even further, it's, it loses more volume. So what this divide button along with these four different options, smooth art, prop one and prop two does, is that it allows you to divide your model in different ways. So prop one uses morph targets. And this is exactly the same thing as the macro that I showed you with a few optimizations. So if I use this one and I press divide, you see that the form, the shape is maintained. Now smooth and art, if I press smooth here, it's the same thing as having this smooth button on and press divide. If I use art, it's the same thing as having this button off and pressing divide. Now, as you can see, hard will keep all the edges as they are. Now the magic about this plugin is really the prop 1 and the prop 2. So prop 2 doesn't use morph targets and prop 1 does. So if you have the morph target, you're going to use it if you use the prop 1 but you won't lose it if you use proportional too. but they give you different results. So you can use these four different algorithms to divide up your model. Now this button here, divide project is a bit like the macro I have in my gum road project higher. So it divides using one of these algorithms and then presses the project button, which is the same thing as dividing and then pressing project all. And this is a way you can create good, clear projections when you're projecting a high poly model onto a low poly model. And if you watch my video on project, on that macro project higher, I'll show you a technique where you can use it. Now let's look at the next button and split the folder. It's a very simple button. It will split your model into poly groups to a new folder. So if I press split folder, it will ask me for the name of the folder. And once I press enter, the result I get is a folder with my model separated into different poly groups. So each poly groups goes to a different subtool. This can be very handy for certain workflows. Now this next option is a very interesting option, split keep edges. And this is for a workflow when you're working with really large scale objects. For example, a rhinoceros like we have here. And this can be so big that the detail that you want to add to it, it starts to get into millions and millions of polys. And you need to break it up into different parts so you can work on each part separately. So that you can increase your poly count without burning up your computer. This is shown manually in a Flip Normals video, and I'm going to leave a link in the description for that video so you can see how you can do this manually. Now I'm going to show you what Split Keep Edges does. Now if I press it, and this will work, I should point out that this will work for a subdivided model or a non-subdivided model. So if I press Split Keep Edges, it goes to my lowest subdivision, as you can see back there. And then it gives me this menu that will allow me to adjust my mask selection. And this mask selection will be an edge that will be created. So I can grow and grow by one or grow by two. And if I, if they start overlapping there, I can press reset and then do my adjustment again or shrink. And let's say I want my edge to be that thick. I press OK. Then what this will do, it will break my model apart and save one subtool as my edge subtool. So if I just select my edge subtool and I hide everything else. So now I have an edge there and this edge was creased as long as well as all the other parts that I have here. So I have my model separated and I can work separately on all these parts. And if I bring everything back, I can now go in and sculpt in each individual part of my mesh. So I can sculpt here, sculpt there, sculpt anywhere you like. And then the purpose of the, this edge here is that if I want to sculpt 
on the edge I can sculpt on this edge too so I can create some I'll just do some stuff here on the edge to exemplify so I would sculpt here on the edge if I wanted to instead of sculpting directly on this sub tool here so basically I would avoid the edge when I was sculpting in one of these separate sub tools and if I wanted to sculpt on the edge I would go to my edge my border sub tool now once I'm happy with it and I'm just gonna undo the stuff that I did on on the separate sub tools here now the only part that I have sculpted just to demonstrate what what's gonna happen the only part that I've sculpted here is the edge and if I just turn off my polyframe here you can see only the edge is sculpted now this works really well with the next button that I'm going to show you in which which is project to all now you know that when you project something you'll be you will be projecting every visible sub tool to the selected sub tool now project to all does exactly the opposite it will project the current sub tool to all the other visible sub tools so if I press project to all here it's finished so it says done if I hide this sub tool and I select any of the other sub tools you see that that border has been projected to all the other sub tools so the, the details that I add on that border have been projected to the different sub tools and I get this result so as you can see these two buttons are very handy for this workflow or similar workflows and project to all is really a good addition to the projection option in ZBrush